I want to talk about the chain rule for differentiation of vector valued functions. So I suppose you have a function f which has m components, f1 up to fm, all of which depend on n variables x1 through xn, and a function g which has l components, g1 through gl, all of which depend on m variables, y1 through ym, then we're going to, first of all, we're going to think of that as a function f from our n to our m and a function g from our m to our l and we're going to take the composite g composed f which is then a function from our n to our l. So having all of these functions and variables around the tempting thing to do is to write the partial derivatives into a matrix. So we're going to call that matrix a df and it will consist of all the possible partial derivatives we could take of all the components of f. And similarly, there'll be a matrix of partial derivatives of G. Now, given these two matrices, we want to work out what the matrix of partial derivatives for the composite is. Let's call the composite H. So H is G composed F. Well, there's an obvious candidate for the matrix of partial derivatives of H. It's just what we get by multiplying these two matrices, DG times df and it has to be this way around because g has m columns and f has m rows okay and the theorem is that this is true this is the chain rule okay how do we prove this well for a function say f um, we have a first order taylor expansion so we can evaluate f at p plus epsilon times a vector v and we get f of p plus epsilon times df of v so this is taking into account all of the partial derivatives of f and the direction v plus an error term which I'll call error um, in the f function so it's just the, the error we make in making this approximation, this Taylor approximation. Similarly, there'll be an, an approximation for G and an approximation for H. So let's now apply G. And what we get is, of course, H at P plus Epsilon V. Because this is just the composite. But we can also apply G on this side and we get, by the Taylor expansion of G, G of F of P, plus DG of this whole term here. So that's Epsilon DF V plus the error in F. And then we get a correction term, which is the error in G. So what's special about these error terms? Well, the point is that they go to, to zero as epsilon goes to zero, but actually they go to zero faster than epsilon. So all of these will go to zero faster than epsilon. This is what it means to be differentiable, is that the, the derivative of your function is the piece that goes to zero exactly as fast as epsilon does. Okay, um, now by linearity of this matrix dg and how it acts on vectors, we know that this is g of f of p plus epsilon dg df of v. So this is the composite of the two matrices, or the product of the two matrices acting on this vector v. And then we get a plus dg times the error in f plus the error in G. But both of these terms still go to zero faster than E, which means that what's left over here is precisely the derivative of H, because if we write out the Taylor expansion of H, this is H of P plus DH, uh, epsilon DH of V, uh, plus the error in H. So just comparing the terms that go to zero exactly like epsilon does, we get that these two have to agree. So that's a proof of the chain rule.